Hey, what is going on, crypto people? It is the Crypto Siege with another day in the life and the crazy life that is statistical asset space. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to each and every one of you. Happy Friday. I believe it is Friday, June, uh, July 15th. Very, very interesting time to be an early adopter in this new asset class that is the digital asset space. This video is going to be fairly short uh, today. So we're going to go with the market because, the, you know, the market is just doing what the market does. What happened to my thing there? So we'll get into that. We'll go over the numbers uh, for sure. But I do want to share that I was on the three hour uh, AMA, three plus hour AMA with. Uh, um, uh, Tom Vays and uh, four attorneys and uh, Simon Dixon, one, two, three. Yep, four attorneys and Simon Dixon as well for three hours. Now, I, I was also uh, on AMA with um, Ivan, not AMA, but I watched a video with Ivan on tech and Simon Dixon as well. We're going to get into that ultimate kind of conclusions and, um, and stuff like that. Um, I Full disclosure, I have reached out to a second law firm now, so just kind of let you know um about that in full disclosure but <clears throat> so we're going to cover that um as well uh in any case um, i'm going to tell you what the what the three out of the four attorneys said in reference to simon dixon's recovery plan so you want to you don't want to miss that for sure so guys listen this is your xrp ripple daily news and around <laughs> zero the 10 minutes. Let's see if I can't get this to work right. Let's go over the numbers on CoinGecko. Currently, the total cryptocurrency market cap is at 904 billion. Uh, the Bitcoin dominance is at 40, what is it? 40.7%, 40.7. Bitcoin is at $21,132. Again, Ethereum is at $1,267. Again. And XRP is at 33.3 cents again. So the market, of course, is doing what the market does. Oh, and I forgot to share with you guys. Um, interesting, very interesting news of a mysterious creditor, mysterious creditor um, for Celsius Network with, that we just discovered uh, on crypto Twitter as well. And that is a very, very interesting twist to this whole madness that is going on with Celsius Network. So uh, we'll cover that as well. Uh, a lot of very, very interesting thing. Look at Quant, it's up 64.5%. Shout out to the Quant holders. Ah, so that means that one time Quant was less than $50, huh? Yeah, one time. I know, uh, shout out to uh, my guy, King Solomon and Crypto Eddie. I know they're a big quick quant. I believe them both to be um, fans of the quant token. So again, we, we need a new 1%. I hope they are in that category of the new 1% in this space. So uh, what else we got? That's it. A lot of double figure res. Lido Dow is up 88% uh, on the seven day. Um, so very, very good there. So what else we got? That's just about it. Um, interesting to see seven day greens coming from convex finance and from uh curve dow i don't know what it means but uh those are good numbers for those guys there uh for sure so in any case that is it guys the market again is doing what the market does so uh let's go over uh my notes and stuff a little bit from this video this video what tone Vase did this ama had four attorneys, Jason Siebert, uh, William Restis, a lady named Dell, Dells, and um, the infamous David Silver. The infamous David Silver, big time attorney. Um, well, they're all big time attorneys, but David is more popular in that, um, you know, he was part of the Cripsy thing and got some significant stuff overturned in terms of crypto. Uh, Jason Siebert and David are very good friends, it appears to me. And uh, Jason is, uh, uh, who's been an attorney in the securities fraud space from both sides, whether he was, um, you know, on the defendant's side or whether he's on uh, the plaintiff's side. So he's kind of, he's kind of litigated from both sides in crypto. And I think that's important um, as well. He's been to a couple of Twitter spaces with Simon Dixon, at least one Twitter space with Simon Dixon. And it was good to see him show up here as well. 
Uh, so it's very, very interesting. A lot, a lot, a lot of information. I can tell you three hours. And, uh, you know, these are all from, you know, again, these, this stuff kind of came from these attorneys. Um, I do think it's very, very interesting um, that an attorney um, is saying, um, an attorney is saying that uh, uh, the platform was in a hole of half a billion dollars in 2021. This is an attorney who is representing um, depositors, holders at Celsius. So um, he is not going to publicly say something um, that not, that that uh, has not been verified, documented, because he would be in trouble. And um, um, apparently, whatever Celsius and Alex Mashinsky did, um, Alex Mashinsky did uh, what they call an affidavit. And it's publicly available, this affidavit that um, Alice Mashinsky um, has put out. Yeah, you guys can kind of go check that out. I haven't looked into the affidavit, um, but it was filed yesterday. So Alice Mashinsky filed an affidavit yesterday. And in that affidavit, apparently the biggest issue is that it was never disclosed to users that there was a vulnerability. So there was no disclosures and also there was no disclosures, according to these attorneys, there was no disclosures of the deceit of the cease and desist actions in these four states um, as well. And they, all of these are um, things like these are personal problems for Alex Mashinsky. Yeah, personal problems for Alex Mashinsky. And again, these are just my notes from these attorneys both of and two of the attorneys, Jason Siebert and um, uh, David uh, Miller, I believe, Silver, David Silver, um, David Silver, uh, have clients that are Celsius users. Okay, so uh, I don't know if the other two didn't mention they had clients, but uh, David did, and so did Jason. So, um, so uh, that is really, really the challenge. Um, sure, um, my, you know, just just realizing that um, according to these attorneys that uh, Celsius was in fact bankrupt in 2021 is not, um, that's not great news. Again, this is not me saying it, this is the attorneys um, that are representing Celsius holders they're claiming that Celsius was bankrupt in 2021. So, and did not disclose the situation uh, to depositors. So again, these are the attorneys saying this. So all of this stuff um, that these attorneys will, uh, uh, will bring in court um, will have to do with regulators and it will have to do with the court. It's gonna be, obviously these are gonna be personal lawsuits and, you know, all of this different kind of stuff that these attorneys will try to do um, to try to make their, you know, do things for themselves as an attorney who wants to get paid and also try to do something for their clients, right? So uh, got to understand both sides of that. Um, there is going to be a um, creditors committee made up of unsecured and secured creditors. That's interesting um, to know. So, um, and the, and the creditors committee will, will be looking at different plans and or options for um, moving forward, whether it be what Celsius at the board or um, the current board members or new board members at Celsius or a new entity, a completely totally different entity um, as well, which is what Simon Dixon is wanting to do. A uh, completely different entity, um, very much in the model of on-chain capital. Um, but the interesting thing about that is, uh, and I'll say this first before I say anything else, three out of those four attorneys absolutely agreed that Simon Dixon's plan for the Celsius user depositor was the best plan. Was the best plan, even better than a 65% on your dollar, you know, liquidation type deal. 
So all three, three out of the four and the fourth one didn't, um, he stated he really didn't understand, you know, Simon Dixon's, how he would benefit from doing it. Um, Cause he felt like he would, with his plan, he would be taking more of a loss <laughs> according to this attorney then, um, then he needs to, because he's a shareholder. So yeah. So it's three out of four, again, saying that they thought that Celsius, I mean, the best recovery plan for depositors was Simon, Simon Dixon's plan. But understand that Simon Dixon's plan is going to be without people at um, Celsius being there. So I, I guess um, you have to look at that. For me, um, I want the best plan for an upside uh, for depositors because it is become very, very apparent um, that the business model of, to me, the business model of Celsius network changed. And we were not informed of the change. Um, and then that's so for us, that's not fair, right? If, if you change your model to kind of a Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer lending model with um, only doing collateralized loans to vetted institutional investors, and you change that model um, without full disclosure, the model has changed. So that's the challenge. And it's just, just the challenge is just video after video after video after video recordings stating what the model was and, and the challenge is that regulators and attorneys are going to quite honestly prove that it changed in that model and <clears throat> full disclosures should have been done full disclosures to depositors should have been made and then you let the depositors decide if they're going to continue to move on with the platform. And that is what is, to me, becoming more and more apparent was not done. So that's the challenge. Um, that, that's the challenge. Um, now, if, if I think I think the thing that is going to be the biggest problem is if we're publicly told, that's the challenge, if we're publicly told it's one entity publicly, right? Who can we get what Celsius Network is from, but other than from the people at Celsius, right? Right, this is what we're trusting in, them disclosing to us what this platform is. That's what we trust, that's what we expect. And apparently um, that was not done. Apparently that was not done. And I don't know when it changed. I don't know when it changed in terms of its business model, but it, it is proving more and more and more so that it has changed, um, that it did change. And it wasn't a disclosure that it changed so that then we then did so that you and I could then decide, hmm, well, I'm not uh, an accredited investor. I can't be dealing in securities, whether that being um, buying a sell token, using a sell token as interest payments on a loan or any of that, if I'm a non-US accredited investor, you might be saying that. Well, you might, you might look at that and say, well, hmm, Maybe I may get in trouble for using the sell token to pay interest payment if I'm not an accredited investor. Um, that's the challenge because there was a Reg D filing, but the challenge is that the disclosure of what that Reg D actually meant was misrepresented. misrepresented it. The lawyers both said that once that Reg D filing was done, it, they are, they're acknowledging that the sell token was a security. That's what it is. It's a security with certain exemptions for filing, but it is still a security. 
is what the uh, attorneys said. At least two of them said that. So, which is cool. If you know, then you could be like, hmm, well, I'm not going to use the sell token to pay. <laughs> use it to pay interest on a loan. Right? So that kind of is kind of a challenge. And I think um, it's going to be kind of proven in court, uh, substantially proven in court that the model changed and there was a disclosure. Um, and I think there's a reason, um, you know, there's a reason for it. So that's the challenge. It's changing its business model without the full disclosure. Um, I am not going to go down the camp of deception or deceiving I don't I don't I don't want to go down that route I, I just I don't want to I don't want to go down that route I want to go down the route of there is a certain amount of disclosures and there were not a certain amount of disclosures and that is where the challenge and this is what the courts and the regulators are going to argue, are going to argue and uh Unfortunately, if you're just a depositor or if you're a depositor, um, uh, you were kind of left in the dark about the re, which, which seems to be the reality of the situation. So again, that's very, very tough. Very, 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 very tough. And again, two of these attorneys are representing clients as Celsius users. So I would highly encourage you to check the video out um, for sure to get better educated uh, for sure. But I want to make sure that you also understand, I'll say it again, three out of those four attorneys said that Simon Dixon, they believe the better plan for depositors was Simon Dixon's recovery plan because it had more of a chance of being made 100% whole and or more than whole, as I like to say as I like to say, more than whole. And so, um, yeah, three out of the four said that. So you could take that for what it's worth. Um, you, can, you can spend the three hours and listen to it yourself. And I highly recommend that you do. But that was what I got. I mean, I took notes and all three of them said, I'd like your plan best for Celsius users. Simon Dixon. So they all three said that. So, but here's a very, very interesting thing here. And I will have to check into it more for verification. But, but according to this dude here, Kadeem, at Kadeem on Twitter, he says, Scoop, the mystery debtor that owes Celsius $439 million is a company called Equities First, no spaces, Equities First. An Indianapolis-based specialist lender, best known for lending against stock. Equities First failed to return crypto Celsius had pledged for a loan in 2021, according to court filings. Okay, let me go over the article here. This is from ft.com, financialtimes.com. I'm going to read this because I think it's I think this is important. Um, and again, full disclosure for me mentally, I already told you guys that I have already written off this crypto mentally. And then once I realized um, from from counsel, from legal counsel, kind of like what has happened in that path. Um, it made no sense to not fight to get your assets back. It, it made no sense not to do that. And so uh, I also asked the question of these attorneys here and uh, um, Jason Seiber or Siebert answered the question and said, I asked him what individual, would individual lawsuits, personal lawsuits, bogged down this whole chapter 11 restructure reorg thing. And he said it would not, it would not bog it down. It would just be, you know, a 
if they were filed before, they would be kind of a stay. And if they filed after the chapter 11 bankruptcy, they would just fall in line like everyone, like everyone else. So um, yeah, so again, if you want my straightforward answer um, as a Celsius user, um, I believe that Simon's plan is going to be the best plan for an opportunity to um, be made more than whole. And, uh, and what one of the attorneys said is, hey, you can be 65% and then the other 30, no, what he said is if you could get 55% of your crypto and then have a 45% in debt and equity, I would take that. That's what the attorney said. That is roughly Simon Dix's plan. So, and this is the big time attorney. Um, I don't want to say big time, but, you know, kind of more fit, more, more out there because he did represent Cripsy or whatever. I mean, he was in the lawsuit with Cripsy um, way back in the day. So, um, so, and I think that's important to understand. Um, so for me, that's what I'm doing. I am going to, um, I am going to push for Simon Dixon's plan. I am going to, um, uh, yeah, I'm going to push for that plan. Um, I think ultimately his plan um, and a chance to be made, uh, again, my words, not his, more than whole, right? More than whole. What's more than whole? Um, 50 to 60 percent haircut plus the other, you know, uh, 40 percent in, in, in debt and or equity with, their, with the chance of that debt or equity becoming um, profitable. So, um, and uh, yeah, un, you know, unfortunately, I'm going to say, unfortunately, that's not going to involve Alex Mashinsky and the board. Some people are going to say, fortunately, it doesn't involve <laughs> Alex Mashinsky and the board, right? So I'm going to say, unfortunately, but I am also going to say this is the plan that I think is going to be the best for the crypto seizures home moving forward. I, that's what I, um, I personally do believe that. And I don't care what it looks like. That, that means bank to the it's a bank to the future name. Then it's a bank to the future name. If it's, um, uh, if they change the model and that the only collateral, which it sounds like is going to be, for loans is going to be Bitcoin and stable coins, then that's what it's going to be, Bitcoin and stable coin. Um, uh, again, um, there's plenty of DeFi platforms out there where the rest of the altcoins can participate in terms of depositing or being a liquidity provider um, getting, you know, you know, being paid to be a liquidity provider, all that. There's plenty of DeFi stuff out there, out there that will allow for that. Um, but if you, if under the regular and regulated and risk uh, in the, in kind of the getting away of any risk uh, rug pulls, it's going to be, uh, to me, he's, I mean, not to me, this is what he said, it's going to be a Bitcoin and stable coins and that is it, <laughs> uh, right, type deal. In terms of he's going to look at everything else as kind of like securities and, and those things are going to be on a securities tokens platform. By the way, he is a big time investor in Securitize, is Simon Dixon and that Bank to the Future uh, model. They have invested in Securitize um, as well. So uh, yeah, so that's kind of the, the deal there. Um, I think, again, I, I've always, you know, I said this in my last video, it been the video before, this is going to be about a six o'clock covering your six type of, of event. Um, but also, Al, uh, Simon Dixon's plan does really, um, it, it, it prevents, if you will, um, you know, it's better than the chapter seven liquidation, um, which is going to just crash the crypto market. And I believe it 100% because Celsius Again, biggest player tied to so many other different things that it's going to cause this, you know, we've seen it already, this snowball effect downwards that is going to just crush the market. So I'd rather, 
personally in a crypto season term, take a, um, a haircut of, you know, whatever it's going to be 30, 40%, and then have that 30, 40% um, come in another form of equity and or debt with an opportunity, although it is risky, it is an opportunity to be made more than whole. That's me in the crypto seizures home. And I know you'll have to make your own decision. And I think the good part about it is um, as a secured, as an unsecured depositor, if you're unsecured depositor, um, you'll have a say in what's the best plan moving forward. And I think that is important. Uh, you know, these top 50 creditors, um, the, the smallest amount was $5 million. The smallest amount was $5 million. Um, and um, that's what they said, the top 50, top 50, right? So um, that means Simon Dixon is in the top three. It feels like he's in the top three, or at least the top five out of that top 50. And so um, so that's kind of where I am. Let me go over this article. Equities first revealed as mysterious debtor to trouble crypto firm Celsius. Um, uh, a mysterious debtor to Celsius Network referenced in the crypto lenders bankruptcy filing is Equities First, according to the Financial Times, a specialist finance company best known for lending cash to executives secured against their stock holding. Chief, uh, Celsius Chief Executive Alex Brzezinski in Thursday said in court filings, his company was owed $439 million by a private lending platform that he did not identify. Two people familiar with the matter said the platforms was Equities First. The money owed by Indianapolis-based Equities First forms a significant chunk of Celsius assets that hundreds of thousands of its customers will be relying on to recover at least some of their savings. $439 million owed to Celsius. So Mashinsky in his filing to the bankruptcy court said that Celsius had liabilities of 5.5 billion, the vast majority of which is owed to their users against which it had assets of 4.3 billion. Equities First is an ongoing conversation. Equities First, this is a quote from Equities First. Equity First is in ongoing conversations with our client and both parties have agreed to extend our obligations. Says Equity First, Celsius did not respond to a request for comment. So the people from Equity First is saying that they've been in contact with Celsius and they have been given an extension to meet their obligations. The court filing said that the $439 million debt owed by Equities First, which is not named in the document, has arisen initially from deals in which Celsius was the borrower. Celsius began borrowing from Equities First in 2019 on a secured basis, secured basis to support its operations, according to the filing. Mashinsky said there was a lack of institutional lending available to cryptocurrency companies at the time. In July of 2021, Celsius sought to repay one of its loans and retrieve the collateral it had pledged as security. The filing said, the filing said, but it, Celsius was informed for the first time that the lender was unable to return the company's collateral on a timely basis. And we all know from the AMAs that Alice Mashinsky has said, and he said publicly on shows, if they're short, Celsius would pay, right? Everybody wants their money at the same time, Celsius would pay. They got $2 billion in, in his reserve, all these different things, right? So anyway, it was informed for the first time that the lender was unable to return the company's collateral on a timely basis. Right, so 439 million, now that's a, that's a big, big chunk. And obviously that would certainly help with being able to um, uh, make the users whole or be able to um, open up withdrawals, et cetera, et cetera. So we're talking nearly half a billion dollars that Celsius is owed from this particular creditor. And um, 
they didn't show up. And so the biggest challenge, again, with all these personal attorneys and people suing, um, it's going to become clear, it's going to be made public, um, again, that this model is different than what people thought it was. A lot of people thought this was a crypto bank, this was a crypto savings account, um, that only loans were being done with the same ones like we were being done, which was over collateralized loans. And more and more stuff is going to come out that that was not, in fact, the case. And when that stuff kind of comes out, it just, it, and now it's always, you know, all this personal lawyering that's going to be going on. And um, that is not going, all that personal lawyering that's going to go on is not to the benefit of the user community as a whole. It definitely helps the, um, the attorneys. It's going to help them. Um, it's going to help certain clients and make feel make them feel better in a way that they try to do something on a personal front, um, uh, or for, for whatever motives or intentions that those might be. Um, but I don't know if as a whole that it, it's going to. And like I said, I will. Um, uh, I don't want to be in a situation where I'm slowing it down, slowing the progress down of a recovery plan. I don't want to be in that uh, position. I do have one law, more law firm to speak with on full disclosure. Um, and we'll see if they try to change my mind or not, but that's kind of where I am. But anyway, so here we are. Um, yeah, so they were unable to pay it back on a timely basis. As a result, Celsius slipped from being a bar to being owed $509 million on an unsecured basis by equities first. So from being a borrower to be owed. So now they're owed, but it's unsecured. Cryptocurrency secured loans are often over collateralized meaning a greater value of crypto is pledged as collateral than the amount that is borrowed. And that's the challenge there to a misstatement if I'm reading it, is there is it right? As a result, Celsius flipped from being a borrower to being owed a 509 million on an unsecured basis. So they're owed money on an unsecured basis by equities first. That's what I'm thinking I'm reading that correctly. Whereas, you know, again, I was under the assumption that all loans were collateralized and over collateralized. Not uncollateral, under collateralized or that, you know what I mean? By not, you know, unsecured. So the debt has been slowly paid down since September of last year. Current repayments are running at 5 million a month. Current repayments are running at five mil a month. The 439 million outstanding is made up of $361 million of cash and 3,765 Bitcoin. That's what the filing said. Again, if you guys got any links to Alice Masinski's affidavit, let me know in the comments, please. We put the link in the comments, that'd be awesome. So there it is there. So um, so that's kind of it. The Celsius in late 2021 raised 600 million in equity funding and a deal led by investment firm West Cap and Canada's second largest pension fund. The deal valued Celsius at 3 billion. The equity's first debt, which um, equity's first debt, which Celsius and Mashinsky had not disclosed before now provides context to the difficulties the crypto lender faced this year as crypto markets crashed. Celsius froze customer withdrawals last month after suffering a run on its deposits and filed for bankruptcy protection earlier this year. So I do, yeah, that run. I remember that it was three weeks. Yep. So. So there, that is there. So 
This is an interesting note. I don't know if it matters, but it says a lawyer for Equities First on Tuesday joined a separate U.S. cryptocurrency, U.S. crypto bankruptcy case, that of failed hedge fund Trios Capital. The filing said Equities First was a creditor. A creditor to Free Hours Capital, which means, uh, yeah, they had some kind of dealings with Free Hours Capital. Hours later, the lawyers filed to withdraw from that bankruptcy case, right? Because Three Hours Capital is in a mess and the, and the owners are on the run. So, it, what it appears to me is that Equities First, again, was involved in the Three Hours Capital and this kind of cascading downfall that took place. Yeah, so like, like they were owed money from Three Hours Capital. If you're owed money from Three Hours Capital and you own Celsius money, Celsius can't get their money from you because you can't get your money from Three Hours Capital. And again, this is not a personal thing. This is not um, this is not believing that people are waking up in the morning and trying to do you harm. But the reality is you've been harmed. And what are you gonna do about that? That is the question. Uh, I am again going to be um, on the side of Simon Dixon and this plan. Um, to make it work. I'm not, now look, if Alex Mashinsky has a plan, I'm open to taking a look at it um, and seeing what that is, but I have not seen or heard of a plan. Doesn't mean it's not gonna be one, but I haven't seen or heard of one. So the only thing I can operate on with now or operate with is the one that I know is being proposed, which will have um, provisions for the non-US uh, non-accredited U.S. investors. Um, and that is kind of basically where every depositor is treated the same. These are things that are going to be important. And um, I just personally believe that um, there needs to be a win. And I don't think anything that uh, bankruptcy court or TradFi has to do is going to be a win for the, the depositors, people in the crypto community, um, as a whole. And if this new entity says, yep, um, the only collateral used um, will be Bitcoin and stable coins, then that's what it is. And, um, you know, I will take my crypto and go elsewhere for um, participating in DeFi. But at least I'll know what this platform is. And it will be operated under regulated, as a regulated entity. Um, and Simon Dixon has made no qualms about that's what it will be with full disclosures. And if you're um, an accredited investor in whatever they're doing, you have to take all these, you, you're gonna have to take tests to say, okay, now you can participate <laughs> in the Black uh, but you will definitely know what it is. So uh, I think that is uh, hugely important. I'll definitely take on the debt and or equity position. That's me in the crypto seizures home. I will take that. I would take that risk. I will let the market uh, decide. Um, and I will lean on um, Simon Dixon's experience and, uh, for, uh, you know, 11 years experience in this particular model. Again, they have these, you know, broker dealer deal. They have the FINRA, they have regulators with, they have these positive relationships with regulators. You know, they got a bunch of high net worth individuals on this bank to the future platform because of the moves that they have made um, with Simon Dixon. So you can't, you can't argue that. You can't say that that's not there and that's not available. So that's what I'm going to be doing. You guys got to certainly want to make your own decision. Um, and um, I think another thing that I think, I don't know for certain, um, I think that speed is important. I think that um, the ability to get access to your funds sooner than later is hugely important. And I don't think um, anyone else has to um, has uh, presented 
a plan to do that other than Simon Dixon. Um, I do think there will be competing plans. Um, and I know that Simon has asked for people in his community to um, who have the deep pockets to, to, to meet his plan or make it even better than with their own plan. And so I think that is encouraging um, to say the least, but um, and I think that's important right now um, uh, for sure. Uh, and the other part of it is, you know, um, Simon's plan is about crypto and not fiat dollars. And I just think that's important um, because um, Simon might not think that anything is of value other than Bitcoin, but other people think there is a, there is value other than Bitcoin, right? So people might be all in on Polygon, right? Polygon was a Matic was a, a crypto on that platform, and um, some people might be like, "Yeah, I don't want a dollar for my Matic. I want my Matic, right?" And so Simon is of the same thing. He doesn't want dollars for his Bitcoin. So I think that is hugely, hugely important uh, kind of going forward. And uh, the more and more, and it just feels more uh, fair. It feels fair overall to everyone. And uh, again, I don't know what this quote unquote haircut is gonna look like. Feels like um, 35 to 45% is, is in that range of the haircut, 35 to 45% is what it's looking like um, in the plan from Simon. Um, and then again, there might be another plan of set of 6 billion. It might be someone can come up with 7 billion, right? And their plan, and then obviously that would take that haircut down. So, right, so, um, but, but you never know what the debt and or, or equity in the company situation will look like. So. That's kind of where it is. I hope that makes sense to you. I'm going to share a couple of tweets that Simon is he's responding to people's stuff. Simon Dixon, the key is we have to get Celsius back to business, right? Question mark. No biz, no revenue, no profit. But is it also contradictory because without withdrawals, no funds to go into Celsius? Can CZ take a state in Celsius? People need confidence and a reason to use Celsius. And, and, and Simon in that video um, made it perfectly clear there is no plan moving forward with from him, and he doesn't believe from anyone with Alison Shinsky and the current board moving forward. So he says, we are putting together a proposal at Banks of the Future as we believe we have regulation, collateral model to lower risk and leadership that discloses. Um, uh, you know, in, 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 in the big boy world, in the big boy world, that's the model going forward, whether we like it or not, DeFi will DeFi will most likely have these, you know, quote unquote, DeFi securities platforms, quote unquote, right? So regulation, collateral, and the other part of it is I, I'm pretty sure that most people thought that Celsius was a regulated entity and these lawyers are saying it's not. And I'm just very confused by that statement from these lawyers, not me saying it, these, these lawyers. So regulation, collateral model to lower risk and, and that collateral model to lower risk is Bitcoin stable coins. Collateral, Bitcoin stable coins. And leadership that discloses. That's gonna be the bank for the future's proposal with those kind of three things. They're gonna be saying they're gonna be, they're presenting a plan and where they're, they are already regulated platform, they're already regulated. And they're going to present this plan and the model that says that it has lower risk because it's only going to be dealing with Bitcoin and it's only going to be dealing with stable coins. And they're going to present their 10 year history and leadership that has been in full disclosure, the full disclosure model. This is what they're going to present. It's that they're the only platform that can present this model. There is no other. There may be a group of people that can come with more and more money, but they don't have the, that model. They don't have all three things, regulated, regulated um, securities firm, um, a collateral model with lower risk, 
which means Bitcoin is stable. Most of them are not a company. It's just investors who have money put together and then leadership that discloses. So, and when he says here, many have their own regulatory issue to resolve though, he's talking about CZ. Bottom line, CZ may have capital, but he has his own regulatory issues that he's dealing with. We all know about that in the community. And I think this is important here. I am, I am willing to wait years, says Carol, uh, if it means complete fulfillment of my deposits. And yes, definitely preserve the crypto. She says here in capitals, I do not want dollars. Simon Dixon says, I do not want dollars for Bitcoin either. Waiting only works if we can build a business together with the amount Celsius lost with you as a shareholder that shares the upside if we win. And that's where I am. Again, I've done, you know, I've done it from all three perspectives. I've been on these Twitter spaces um, from just a depositor standpoint, and even though I have a uh, own sell token. Um, I've done it the, you know, the YouTube route, going through all these videos and listening to people. And I've done it through the attorney route and listening to uh, what bankruptcy attorneys say, uh, security fraud attorneys are saying. Um, and after putting that all together, um, for me, it, it's um, for me in the crypto seizures firm, again, the only plan that I have seen that makes sense and has a shot for more than whole is Simon Dixon's plan. So, there it is there, guys. I hope that has been of value to you. Um, this wraps up your XRP Ripple Daily News in around zero or 10 minutes. Do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell so you know when we upload a video or when we do go live. I am going to end this video like I do all of my videos, guys, and remind you of this. Hold money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather that we remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in where we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating? Or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know. That the battle for you has already been fought. And the victory is yours. Go get it.